Yeah, I know. We're back. Some people have called this heaven. Some people have called this the void. Legend has it even some people have lost their eyesight watching videos that came from this very studio. But that's not important. What's important today is that we have both the M1X MacBook Pros, both the 14 and 16 inch, fully spec'd out, and we're gonna unbox them. Merry Christmas. Could have bought a Honda. We'll start with the 14 inch, I guess. That was a fail. My hands are like sweaty. I don't know why I'm so nervous right now. This is crazy. I can't tell you guys how long I've been waiting for this. Ooh, that smell hits you pretty hard. As you guys can see, MacBook Pro. Okay, so this one, the 14 inch, isn't as heavy as I thought it was gonna be. Honestly, it feels pretty good. Now we have the new MagSafe charger here. MagSafe, the USB-C, Lightning. Uh, I should note that if you guys don't wanna charge your laptop for whatever reason through the uh, MagSafe port, you can use a regular Thunderbolt port or USB Type-C. Now I would like to mention one thing. With the lower spec 14 inch models, if you pick up the lower spec, it'll give you the smaller charger. I know you get the 96 watt charger with the much higher end spec models. I believe it's a 67 watt charger if you pick up the base models with these. And I think Apple's charging like 20 bucks to get the extra one. And here we go with that 96 watt charger. Now, a lot of people hate the charger. I mean, it is quite bulky. If you guys want, there is a Hyper Juice that I just picked up that's a 100 watt charger. It's a little bit smaller than this, a little bit more compact, and it actually can charge up to four devices that are 100 watts at the same time, which is pretty insane. I will make sure I have that link down below for you guys. If you want an all-in-one and don't want to carry around this heavy charger, you can just carry around one of those and a Thunderbolt cable or Thunderbolt cables based on what you guys have in your bag. Now, we'll also be doing a day in the life review with both of these laptops. We're going to compare the 16-inch versus the Surface Laptop Studio from last week, which I told you guys was my favorite laptop that came out this year. For PC users, that's got a 3050 Ti, beautiful screen, fully rotating display, bends at a 45 degree angle, turns into a tablet, and it sounds absolutely amazing. So if you guys want to see that full review, make sure you guys are subscribed and turn on your post notifications, along with anything else tech or gaming related that we cover here on the channel. But I'm curious, aside from pharmaceutical work, day trading, stuff like that, heavy editing, what do you guys want to see as far as tests and comparisons go? Make sure you let me know down below in the comments section. Now let's go ahead and open up the 14 inch. There we go. Turns on right away. And there's the notch. It's not even that bad, guys. Come on, man. You guys are complaining about the notch? Hola to you too. Hello, senor. Hello. Dude, that notch is not that bad, guys. I mean, let's be realistic. We're going to talk about this a little bit more, but let's go ahead and get set up here. We speak English here. Why do we always put United States at the bottom? I mean, oh, there it is. Oh, this keyboard feels good, guys. Of course, the battery's dying. What are the odds? What are the odds of that? Smack. My last MacBook lasted two weeks. This one's dead right out of the damn box. Now, obviously, they got rid of the... <laughs> they got rid of the touch bar. Now, I wasn't one of those guys that were too crazy over it. I never really used it that much, but I am going to miss, like, sending the emojis and stuff off of it. It makes it a lot easier. I mean, but I do like the full functional keys at the top here. Having the F keys is so much more simpler. We've got the Touch ID over here that's black. It fits in. This whole keyboard looks... It looks and feels great. I mean, there's nothing else to say. I wonder if there's any stickers in here. What? Oh, baby. Okay. I don't know why I just checked for that randomly, but we get black stickers now. And I'm assuming the black stickers are for their Pro lineup models, like the MacBook Pro M1Xs. Thanks for not sparing any expense there, Apple. Thought you forgot about us. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, okay guys. All right, so right off the bat, this screen, this screen, you guys aren't gonna be able to tell, this screen looks absolutely amazing. Now with the 14 inch here, obviously we have the HDMI, we have the Thunderbolt 4 and the SD card slot on this side. On the other side, we have the MagSafe, two more Thunderbolt 4 ports and a headphone jack. It's nice to have those back. 
Apple after you took them away. Now we'll do a full buyer's guide for you guys. If you wanna see that, make sure you let me know down below in the comment section. In my opinion, these have the 32 core GPU, 64 gigs of RAM, and the 10 core CPU. They're maxed out aside from the storage. But for the love of God, I don't believe there is any reason to go above two terabytes on these machines. Spend 500 bucks and get a two terabyte portable SSD like the Seagate Fire Cuda or the X5 Thunderbolt. Unless you're a baller, then go for it. I'm just giving you my opinion. Now 98% of you should know that the M1 MacBook Pro from last year is still overkill, especially when it comes to everyday tasks. But when it comes to the M1 Pro or the M1 Max like these that are fully specced out, it's just on another level. I mean, it's completely unnecessary to pick these up unless you know for sure you're gonna be doing heavy editing, rendering, 4K workflows, stuff like that, like I mentioned before. It just seems like these are a bit too much. Unless you plan on doing that stuff in the future and you see it as an investment, then by all means go ahead and pick one up. Now for me, editing footage on the go was never really possible. 422 10-bit, Sony A7S III, even editing 6K, 8K Red Raw footage, throwing that in a Premiere Pro timeline on a Mac just wasn't happening, let alone adding transitions and color grading. Complete nightmare. So hopefully these will get the job done and they won't disappoint me. All right, now, 16 inch unboxing. Oh, that's heavy. Oh, it feels like, I don't know, two pounds heavier. Fail. When that smell hits you, it's game over. Get that same, same circle. Designed by California and Apple. You guys thought I forgot about these? Oh, Apple, cat's out of the bag now. Once the genie's out of the bottle, he ain't going back. We want these black stickers every year. All right, so this is the 140 watt charging brick, and I believe this one only comes with the 16 inch model. You get the 96 watt with the 14 inch, 140 watt with the 16 inch. Keep that in mind. It's hefty. It's a big boy. It's a big boy. Now overall, both have much thinner bezels and look absolutely amazing in my opinion. Over 20% thinner bezels than before, which does kind of give us the notch. But guys, in all honesty, I mean, look at this. iPhone 13 Pro versus your M1 Max here. Look at that. The notch is almost the same size as your iPhone. I feel like it's not even that big of a deal. Why is that being blown out of proportion? I don't know, maybe I'm losing it. For me, it doesn't really even seem to be a problem. Not to mention, when's the last time you've ever really even used that spot on your MacBook? I feel like it's irrelevant. It looks completely fine after a couple of days, you'll get used to it. They gave us everything else we wanted, almost. Stop complaining before they take other stuff away, like the screen, turn this into a tablet or something. Call it the iPad Max. Apple, don't use that idea. <laughs> now just for comparison's sake, I'm gonna pull out the Surface Laptop Studio that we reviewed last week here. And I kinda wanna see how this 16 inch model fits in this Peak Design V2 backpack. It actually fits perfectly fine. So this is the V2 20 liter Peak Design backpack. You guys know it's one of my favorite tech backpacks. And the 16 inch fits just fine in there. As far as comparison goes between the three, let's see here. The Surface Laptop Studio is a 14.4 inch laptop. And in all honesty, it's about right, it's about an inch and a half here in comparison to the 16 inch model. Obviously we're gonna do a full review in comparison between the two, but I just wanna show you guys this real quick. The Surface Laptop Studios bezels, actually it looks like even the M1 Mac has thinner bezels than a Surface Laptop Studio, which is honestly pretty insane for me. Look at that, look at the difference in bezel size. Look how much more screen real estate you get. Obviously the 14.4 inch Surface Laptop Studio is smaller. So let's actually compare it to the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So you guys can get an idea of how thin these bezels are on these laptops. That's crazy to me, dude. The bezels are super, super thin on the MacBook. I mean, razor thin. I mean, this is really, really impressive. Let's go ahead and stack up these laptops top of each other. You guys can get an idea. We got a top down view here of how much bigger the 16 inches versus the laptop studio and the 14 inch M1 Max. That's crazy. You get a side comparison between the three. 
in all honesty, I mean, even the Surface Laptop Studio is about the same thickness as both of these laptops. So as far as thickness goes, weight, I know the Surface Laptop Studio that I have has that 3050 Ti in it, so the weight comes in at just around four pounds. So all of these are relatively in that same weight. Obviously the 14 inch is three and a half pounds. But performance wise, should destroy the Surface Laptop Studio. So that review is coming up next. The more and more I look at this 14 inch model, the more I like it. It's all gonna come down to editing space and me seeing how much I'm gonna like editing on that 14 inch versus a 16 inch model. Me personally, I've never owned a 16 inch MacBook Pro, so this is gonna be interesting to see. But we said that 13 inch. Oh, by the way, while I got you guys here with the backpack, I wanna show you that Hyperjuice charger so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So in a perfect world, you have one of these, this Hyperjuice charger here, it has 200 watt, oh, wait, I thought I had four. No, sorry, I was wrong. It has 200 watt chargers and two 18 watt chargers, which still makes it super convenient because you can charge both M1 Maxes at the same time, just need an extra cable. And look how small this thing is. Let me grab the charger here. When you look at the charger size, it's bulky, right? But this can only charge the MacBook, right? This Hyperjuice charges pretty much everything. And all you need is one of these in your bag. And now all you have to carry is a few cables. And the cool thing is, even if you do wanna use your uh, MagSafe charger that came with your laptop, you can use that with the Hyperjuice. Works completely fine. And this is your all-in-one charging brick that you need to carry in your backpack. That's pretty much it. I recommend like a six foot, this is a Thunderbolt 4 cable, and also pick up a few other Thunderbolt cables if you have some SSDs and stuff like that, and stuff to charge your phones. But that's pretty much it. I will make sure to have these linked down below for you guys in the description. Now I'm curious to know, did you guys stick with your M1 Mac from last year? Did you upgrade to an M1 Pro 14 inch, or did you fully spec out a 16 inch M1 Max? Make sure you let me know down below where you'll also find the links to everything that we covered in today's video. The only difference between both of these pretty much is their size. You get four to five hours more battery life on the 16 inch versus that 14 inch model. Full tests, reviews, and comparisons are coming for both laptops. Just make sure you guys let me know down below in the comment section what you wanna see. If you wanna see more, go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Detroit Fury. And if you enjoyed this content, please make sure you smash that like button for me, subscribe, turn on your post notifications, it really means a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.